Hi, I'm Bart Hansen, the owner and operator of CrushLivePoker.com. For the best in poker strategy, subscribe to the channel. Today I want to review a very interesting hand that I played against Stephen Chidwick in day two of the LAPC $10,000 main event which went on in February of 2017. Now, if you're not familiar with Stephen Chidwick, he is a high-stakes tournament player. Uh, he has almost $7 million in cash game winnings, and he's actually been around for quite some time, at least seven years. I've actually played with him in the past before, and I was always very impressed by the way that he played. He wasn't really super aggro, but he just doesn't make a whole lot of mistakes. Now, this was in day two, and I was actually doing pretty well. I had a healthy chip stack. He actually entered the tournament in day two, which was something that Matt Savage allowed. So he started with 30K, and he had worked his stack up to about 38K. And this went on in level two of day two. So the blinds were 600 and 1200 with the 200 ante. And from under the gun one, he raised to 2500 just over a min raise. Now, I had been doing pretty well and sat with 100,000. I was in the cutoff, and I decided to flat with ace-queen offsuit with the ace of spades, which is really important uh, in this hand. Now, you could make a case that I could three-bet that hand, but it's really sort of awkward sizes. Like, if I three-bet, I would probably have to get it in or fold. It would be really, really close. And I, I just think that I like to flat there in position, as my experience does come well from you know playing post-flop. Now, when I do flat, that's going to give the big blind a pretty good price with the ante, so I expect him to come in a fair amount. But he was sort of a weak player, so I wasn't really concerned about him. But he did call, and we saw the flop three ways. So the board comes out, queen of spades, eight of spades, three of hearts. So it's queen, eight, three, and obviously I flop top pair. Now, there are two spades out there. It gets checked over to Chidwick, and he decides to check. Well, at this point, I really think that my hand is the best hand. Um, you see preflop raisers check with hands with showdown value, like jacks, tens, nines. He could be pot controlling, like king, queen. I didn't really think that he would ever check aces or kings all that much because the big blind was kind of a poor player, and the board did have you know several straight draws and flush draws. So I really thought I had the best hand. So I bet 3,500. Now, the big blind folded pretty quickly, and it got back around to Chidwick, and he decided to call. So, you know, I thought that that was somewhat interesting. I thought that he still had a medium strength showdown type of hand. The turn was an offsuit deuce. It was the deuce of diamonds, and he checked once again. Now, I thought at this point, because I had the ace of spades in my hand, obviously he couldn't have the nut flush draw, that I wanted to make my hand look like maybe it was the nut flush draw. I see so many players in this spot, in my spot in the cutoff, check back king, queen, that when they bet, especially if they bet large, their hand is really polarized, meaning that they're either very strong or they're very weak, like they're trying to blow Chidwick off of his hand. So I decided to make a rather large sizing, especially with his stack size, and I bet 9,500 on the turn. Remember, I bet 3,500 on the flop, and now I bet 9,500 on the turn, about a half pot size bet. And that's a pretty big bet in tournament poker. Uh, he thought about it for a while, and he called again. So at this point, he's committed about 15,000 of his 38K. He's down to 23K. So he's got, you know, only maybe just under 20 big blinds left. Now, the river rolls off the deuce of spades for a final board of queen eight three deuce deuce and now the third spade comes through so front door spades have completed and he checks again now this is a spot in a cash game where if i think a guy is holding on with jacks or tens i certainly will make a value bet but if you bet for value and you're wrong in a tournament it costs you because the chips are so valuable but the reason why I was tanking for so long here was I didn't think that he was actually going to bluff catch me with that range that I thought that he might check call with on the flop, like jacks, tens, nines, even ace-king, something like that, because front door spades came in. 
I mean, I bet the flop, I bet the turn, and now spades come and I bet the river. He doesn't beat a flush. He doesn't beat a queen. It's really difficult for him to check call all three streets with kind of a marginal hand. I've also seen him play some hands in an unorthodox way, like sometimes checking pocket aces, pocket kings with this chip stack. So even though I considered betting like really, really small, like maybe 5,000 or something like that, I ended up thinking better of it, and I checked it back, not expecting to get called from worse, and he turned over a very interesting hand. He had a flush. He had king-10 of spades, which was very surprising to me because that hand doesn't really have showdown value on the flop or on the turn, and I would expect him to make a continuation bet with a king-high flush draw. It's not a bad board to see bet into two people, but instead, he decided to check call with it twice. Now, on the river, if I did make a bet, he probably is only calling because he can't beat the nut flush. He also can't beat a full house if I had to happen to flat him with, say, pocket queens, pocket eights, pocket threes. So he certainly wouldn't have check raised, especially if it was his tournament life. But because I have had experience with him in the past and he's taken some unorthodox lines, I was pretty happy with me kind of putting it all together and finally checking back at the end. Hey guys, if you like what you've seen here, please click on the subscribe button and you'll get notified every time we put up a new video. And if